My name is Vicki McCarty from Calico Patch Designs. And first, let me thank you all for participating in the Wool and Oak Mystery Stitch Along. It, we were just amazed and so surprised by how many of you all participated. And I want to thank you so much from all the designers. Um, it was just amazing. We've had a, had a very awesome group of ladies with us. Um, they did some beautiful blocks. I hope that you guys enjoyed all that. I will tell you that we will be doing another one. Um, it's a lot smaller project, but um, and it's coming very soon. As a matter of fact, it's in the process now. Um, and I can't tell you anything about that just yet, but it's coming very soon. So we need to get this project stitched up and out of the way so we can start another one. So today what I'm going to share with you is how I stitched up the center of the wool and oak um, setup kit, the setup pattern. So um, here is what the center looks like. So now, first of all, I've got a secret to share with you. I know you all aren't going to believe this. So I stitched most all of these wool appliques up by machine. Yes, I said it. I did it by machine. All of our machines have this beautiful blanket stitch. Um, I sell Berninas in my shop. Uh, and I know my Bernina is ca capable, and so are other machines, of doing a beautiful blanket stitch. So, yes, that's what I did. And I'm going to share with you how to do that. By no means do you have to do yours that way. Um, but here's the thing I want you to realize. We have some of you all that aren't able to do hand stitching anymore. And there has to be another way for you them to enjoy wool applique. Now, if you'll look at my project you'll see that you can't tell the difference of whether I stitched it by hand or by machine. So now if you'll look really close at this, <clears throat> you won't be able to tell really what I did by hand and what I did by machine. Most all of the stitches, uh, the blanket stitches were all done by machine. Um, the vines and everything were done by hand. Um, the little uh, cross stitches on his hat and things were done by hand. The smaller pieces I did by hand, but you can't tell the difference. So all it takes is just to manipulate that machine just a little bit. The blanket stitch has a default setting on that stitch. And all I did was change it up just a little bit, used a 12 weight Aurafil thread and a size 16 top stitch needle. Now, I had to put tearaway stabilizer on the back because of the heavy stitching and just use regular normal 50 weight thread in the bobbin and I got this result with it. So this tutorial is going to be a little different for some of you um, and some of you are going to go ahead and do it by hand and that is perfectly fine. But I wanted to talk to the ones who are having to do it by machine and show them that if you do it this way, no one will be able to tell if you did it by hand or by machine. Okay, to get started, we're going to lay our strips out in this order and sew them up in rows. We will have to lay out four different sets like this to create that center medallion. Be sure to take the time to pin at the seam so that everything lines up nicely. Once you have the block sewn up, you will want to make sure that you press it really well and then you will trim it down to a 16 and a half inch square. After you have four of the blocks made, then you will lay the sashing between and the cornerstone in the middle, like shown. In this picture, you can see that I started sewing up the blocks in rows, adding the sashing in between and then sewing the sashing to the cornerstone and then the bottom row is the two blocks with the sashing. Make sure that you press in after every seam that you sew. Once you have all the blocks sewn together and the medallion finished for the center, then you want to press it really well and next it's time to do your wool applique pieces. So I will start by putting them on light steam seam 2 and cutting them out on the line 
and then I will lay an applique pressing sheet over top of my placement pattern and as you can see here I will start fusing pieces down. So I fuse the silo down first and then the roof of the silo down. Next you can see I started adding the shadow of the barn down and then the actual front of the barn. So what you want to do is is go the farthest away from uh, you first and then build on top of it. And by putting these all on the applique pressing sheet, then I can see the placement pattern on the back side and it allows me to place the pattern pieces perfectly. Then you want to put the shadow of the barn side down and then you'll put the roof down on top of that. And that will make the barn complete. Next you'll want to add the door and the four windows and go ahead and press this together on the applique pressing sheet. Now that the barn is all complete with all the wool appliques, I go ahead and let it cool down after ironing it and, and once it's cooled down, then I'm ready to do the next piece. In this picture, you can see that I'm able to peel the barn up off the applique pressing sheet because it's cooled now, and I can slide the little gravel road up underneath. And I'm still looking at the applique pressing sheet so I know exactly where the, gra the gravel road will lay. You'll want to go ahead and press it into place and just let it cool down also. So now I'm going to go ahead and slide my applique pressing sheet around and try to fuse together all the pieces that I can. So next I will go ahead and, and try to fuse down the body parts of the lamb first. So the first thing I will add is his legs and his tail and then I will add the, his little body on top of that. Using the applique pressing sheet as my guide, I can go ahead and lay his little black face with his ears and everything down to match the applique pressing sheet so that I get the exact tilt to his head. Once that sheet is pressed down and in place, then I scoot my applique pressing sheet around and go ahead and fuse the other little sheet together. I still have room on the sheet to go ahead and put the pumpkins together with the leaves behind it and go ahead and make them one applique piece also. The applique pressing sheet's getting pretty full so I know that it's time to take some of my pieces off. So everything has cooled down now because if I start trying to peel everything up without letting it cool down then um, the fusible on the wrong side of it starts coming off on the applique pressing sheet. So I wait till it cools down really well and then you can see I start peeling the barn up and it's going to be one big applique now that's all fused together. So next you'll see that I have fused my barn back down to the applique pressing sheet. Again you can fuse them down as many times as you wish but that way that will keep it sturdy and stable and I will go ahead and go back and add my quilt to the uh, top of the barn. Um, I had forgotten to add the quilt but it made it really nice because then I could show you that I can iron it back onto the applique pressing sheet. I wouldn't have to. I wouldn't have to iron it back down there but I like to because I know that it's not going to move and it allowed me to add my quilt pieces to the top of the barn and be able to look at it before I fused it down permanently. So as you can see here, I've let it cool down and it's became one big applique piece. So you can see that I'm peeling it up, my hands behind it, the road and everything's attached, it's just going to be perfect. So now that I've taken everything off the applique pressing sheet, I'm going to go ahead and do the picket fence. Um, the rails I will put on first, the two rails because they're the farthest away, and then I will start laying my posts on top of them. Since I'm still able to see the placement pattern underneath my applique pressing sheets, I go ahead and lay all four of the posts out to cover the rails and fuse them all together as one piece. Next I'll go ahead and scoop my applique pressing sheet around so that I have room to put the apple tree down and fuse it together. 
So you can see in this picture through the applique pressing sheet, there is my apple tree and I'll know exactly how to place my wool appliques. I'll go ahead and place the um, leaves, the, the large green leaf area down first, and then I can go ahead and place the uh, tree trunk down on top of that. I go ahead with my iron and fuse them all together on the applique pressing sheet. And now you can see the fence and the tree are all fused down on there and ready to use. I went ahead and peeled the picket fence up off of the applique pressing sheet after it cooled. And as you can see there, it's all one piece in my hand, all fused together so that it makes it much, much easier to put down on my fabric to start my applique. So after I got the rest of the pieces fused down and got them into individual sections of appliques, you can see I've laid my fence down and now I have the scarecrow in my hand. So it's much easier for me to lay the applique pressing sheet down on the placement guide and I can place the scarecrow and the pumpkins and everything together to be one applique piece. As you can see here, the scarecrow is in position, the fence is already fused down again on my applique pressing sheet, and there's my pumpkin section. So it'll be very easy to place it down and match it up exactly to the applique pressing sheet. There's no better way to get this more perfect than to be able to do this on this applique pressing sheet. Um, you can fuse it down on there. Like I said, it's a Teflon coated sheet. There's no right or wrong to it, but you can fuse your applique pieces down on there and then after they cool you can peel them off now an applique pressing sheet never wears out you can use it over and over there's not a right or wrong side to it um, these applique pressing sheets are available on my website i'll share a link at the end of this to uh, show you where you can purchase them in this picture you can see just how perfect everything has went together and you can see that i'm ironing them all together to fuse them down as one piece that way when i peel them up and lift them off there I don't have to wonder if his hat's gonna move or his you know, scarecrow's glove's gonna fall off or one of the leaves will fall off the pumpkins. It's one, one solid piece. Now there are two pieces to the fields. There's the back field and the front field, I called them, and they were rather large pieces. So rather than use fusible on them, I went ahead and drew the fields out with freezer paper. It's just regular roll of freezer paper like you get at the, at the grocery store and it's um, usually Reynolds is the freezing, freezer paper that I buy. Um, what I do is lay the freezer paper down on my pattern and draw it out and then you can iron the freezer paper on the wrong side of your wool with the shiny side down and it will actually adhere and stick to whatever you iron it to. It'll actually stick to something up to seven times. So you can actually use it for a pattern for several things. And it's just my go-to whenever I want to make large pieces. So you can see there that I'm just fusing it down. Then I'll go back and cut around my, my freezer paper pattern and then that will be ready to add to my applique piece later. Here you can see that I, these are the large pieces, the front field and the back field, that I had cut out with freezer paper. Well, since I like everything to be fused down, I use a product called 606. Now, 606 is a spray that you use that you can spray on the back of things, and you can see this one has been sprayed, and it leaves a powdery white residue on it. What it does is it turns that piece of wool into something that's fusible. So anything I spray 606 on the back of turns it into something I can iron and fuse down into place. So if you'll notice on here, there's a pin on it that I left so that I would know where the upper left-hand corner was so that when I flipped it over, I knew what direction I wanted it in. And then here is the back field, and I've done the same thing with it. There's a pin in it telling me which ends the which is the top left side. And again, I've sprayed it with 606 so that I would be able to fuse it down to my cotton background. 
Now this was just to show you what I mean about fusing pieces together and making uh, the smaller pieces into a larger applique. You can see the barn, the silo, and the roads one piece. My sheep are individually, but they're all together as one sheep. My tree is by itself one tree with the trunk and the leaves, and then the fence section the pumpkin section and the scarecrow section is already fused together so when i get ready to put these together it's going to be so simple um, notice they're upside down and there's a reason for that because um, light steam seam 2 has a little bit of stickiness to the back of them uh, and makes them a little tacky so that i can place them down and and also peel them up and, and move them around if i wish but also that picks up you know little threads or lint or different things and i don't want anything to keep it from fusing down real well and and staying in place for me okay so in this slide you can see that i'm starting to put my pieces on my background so i've got my background all laid out i laid the two pieces the back field down first the front field down on top of that you can see now i've not fused anything down i haven't ironed anything down because as long as i do this first then i get to choose what i move to the left or to the right or up or down a little bit so i like to put it all on there and then look at it before i fuse it all together so it gives me another chance to move things a little bit rather than just fuse it and be stuck with whatever i have so now you can see i've put the fence pumpkin and scarecrow section in the bottom and i've got it kind of where i want it but still nothing's fused into place yet because i'm still making sure i have everything where i want it to be okay once i have everything else in place then i come in with the two sheep and get them placed where i think they should be now once i have it the way i want i'm ready to start fusing it in place what I have done is left it in the floor. I like working in the floor. I've got a bigger space, especially with a medallion center that's this big. And I slid an ironing board underneath that piece and fused it down from the front side really well with the steam iron. You're fusing down wool, so and wool takes a little while to get warm. So you really want to do it an extra uh, amount of time. But here's the next thing that I do. Once I get it fused from the top side, you can see in this picture that I flipped it over and I'm going to iron now from the back side of the block because all that the, um, to get to the fusible, all I have to do is get through one layer of cotton and it adheres and sticks down so much better for me if I iron from the back side also. Now, like I told you in the beginning, a lot of the stitches I did um, on this piece, I did a blanket stitch on the sewing machine. So in order to absorb some of those stitches, I will place the Sulky Tear Easy Stabilizer on the back side of this block on the entire thing. Um, it uses two strips and you know two pieces of it because it's only 20 inches wide, but that will absorb the stitches of my, um, applique my blanket stitch and will not let it pucker because the thread is really heavy and so is the um, stitching. Now this is a close-up of the blanket stitch that I used on my sewing machine. Again, I used Aurafil 12 weight cotton thread. I have the setting on my machine changed from the default settings. I have a single blanket stitch, but I set it to 4.5 width by 4.0 length and that allows it to look like it's hand stitched another thing that i do is i have an integrated walking foot on my machine i go ahead and click it down into place because this is some heavy fabric to be sewing through now as you can see on the scarecrow um, I did use my sewing machine to stitch around him on the appliques, but now I hand stitched like the detail on the face and the um, detail on the hat band. Those I actually did by hand. Um, they just look better. And then you really do think that this is all done by hand if you add the detail by hand and your blanket stitching by machine. I did um, set my blanket stitch smaller 
when I was doing smaller pieces. Um, this is probably a 3.5 width on his jacket by 3.0 length. Um, because if I were really doing it by hand, I wouldn't do it as large as the blanket stitch around the fields because it would just be too heavy and, and it would kind of overpower my applique stitches. Now, if you look really close at the fence, you can tell that the vines on the fence have been done by hand. Um, the little flowers that have been added, they're stitched down by hand. And then I've also went back and added a little gold bead to the center of them to add a little sparkle to my piece. The vines around the pumpkin and the little curls are all done by hand also, just to add a little hand touch of sewing to those. Here you can see that I am stitching around the little barn windows with the machine. Um, I made it really small. It's probably maybe even a 2.0 by, you know, 1.8 um, to go around the windows. But now when I actually did the stitching on the windows for the panes, I did that by hand again. You can see how nice the stitches look on my barn. Um, the silo and every part about the barn was done by machine. The only thing that I did by hand was the window panes and um, the crossbars on the barn was done by hand and the rest of it's all done by machine. Now here you can see the center medallion is already stitched and ready to go and it's ready to be placed in my quilt. So I went ahead and added my beads and my buttons to my project. Um, I'm going to say you might not want to do that. Um, most of the quilters that will be machine quilting it will appreciate it if you don't add those in. Um, my husband Tom does all my quilting and he's just used to me doing that and he knows um, to catch the hopping foot before it moves around too much. If the hopping foot were to catch one of the beads or buttons, it could very easily tear a hole in your quilt. So that's why quilters would prefer that you didn't do that. So we've got our center medallion done and we're good to go. Well, I hope this tutorial has been helpful and will help you to finish your wool and oak quilt. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to send a message to me or email or uh, even a message on Facebook and I will answer them as soon as possible. Um, I have a new stitch along I've started called Gingerbread Stitches. Um, it, it's only a six month program and it is all just my designs. Um, the quilt is 82 inches square and these are some of the blocks as you can see. All the beads, the buttons, embellishments, all the fun stitching on the gingerbread houses. Um, it has just started. We have one block, block one going as of right now. Block two is just now shipping. So you are more than welcome to join us on this great project. Again, the f patterns are uh, free downloads. Um, you'll just have to check it out on my website and, and join us. Um, also watch for my, um, one of my projects to be in the fall issue. I think it's coming out in mid-September for uh, Simply Vintage. Um, that will be coming soon. I also have a new line of fabric coming out from Marcus uh, Fabrics and it's going to be called Garden Getaway. So that will be shipping in February. Um, please stay tuned to this Facebook group for new projects. Um, thank you again so much for participating and may all of your stitches be blessed. Mm -hmm.